Uh, hey, good evening, folks, and welcome to the Let's Go Fishing Show. Uh, my guest tonight's Mike Cox, and, and uh, Mike, glad you came over with me. Glad to be here again. All right. Maybe we might learn something from you here this week. Uh, folks, uh, you know, that's uh, the music there before the show. That's uh, Mike's favorite song, Take Him yeah. to the River. <laughs> that's so, right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to take him down there while it's covered, iced over, Mike. I'm going to drop you in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. All right, good, good, good deal. Uh, listen, I uh, want to say hello to my wife, and uh, she's uh, uh, she's running back and forth from the channel. We're competing against the Lady Vols, and, uh, you know, I'm hoping we're going to win, uh, <laughs> Mike, and that kind of thing. Uh want to say hello to my dad. He, dad just got home from the hospital. He's been in the hospital ever since last Saturday. 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 Just got him back today uh, about 4 o'clock, so... Uh, uh, he's resting. I hope he's up watching the show. Uh, Bill, Polly, and, and uh, Paul, want to say hello mm -hmm. to you all, too. Uh, before we get to the fishing film, uh, Mike and I, will just tell you, we didn't have, we slipped off Sunday afternoon and went down to uh, watch Bart and, and got about 15 minutes of crappie fishing and, and uh, that kind of thing. So uh, it's pretty cold, Mike. It is a little cool. Little little cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, or, well, at least you started out without your coveralls on, and, yeah. and uh, uh, next thing I know, you had them on, or had you, you worn clothes on. So, uh, uh, yeah. I, and, and, you know, I didn't mean, well, it wasn't that bad cold, was it? It was the wind blowing, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. wasn't good. Got my hands cold. Uh, but anyway, we got some crappie film, and, and uh, we're going to show that. But I wanted to tell you all, next week, I've got a film uh, that I shot back in uh, uh, early summer last year. Uh, Rick Dunn, world champion duck mm -hmm. caller, 2007. Uh, and, and, you know, the guy really impressed me. And, and uh, you know, a world champion at anything, Mike, is uh, pretty good. You better believe it. So, uh and, and I, I'm not going to spoil the film, but if you're <coughs> interested in, in, or know someone that is, I'm going to show that film. It, it's about 11 minutes long, and uh, it's real interesting. I, you know, he got my attention real quick. Uh, uh, I've got a lot more uh, respect for the, the duck callers and that kind of thing, so I'm going to do that. I think it's still duck season. Uh, I'm going to get that show, shown before the, the season closes. Uh, so if you've got any duck hunters in your family or know of any that might want to watch that, uh, get them set up for next week, and, and we'll we'll show that film for sure. Because uh, it might be all the film we got, Mike. Might be. Yeah. This uh, weather, you never know. Yeah. I, I guarantee you, Mike, I can outcast you right now. Probably. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to throw mine up there on the ice. Mm-hmm. Better scoot. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Mike's working down there at Kingston, looking at the river there, and it's all frozen over just about it. And uh, uh, so uh, I don't know if he's going to want to go fishing Saturday or not. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but anyway, uh, I want to say hello to those folks. And another person I want to say hello to, a lady in uh, Florida, Paul King, uh, his sister, I think it is, is, is in Florida, and she's watching the show. And uh, uh, I've got Chance and Shirt here, Chance King. And uh, I tried to get Linda. The reason I wanted Paul's phone number from you last night was not uh, Chance is going to get his shirt, but I was going to get him to come over here and let me give it to him in person. Well, Paul, he, you know... Uh, uh, he kind of got camera shy on me, so, uh, uh, but I've got the shirt, and uh, I'm going to deliver it up to Edgemore, and, and Paul's going to pick it up. I hope I can get it up there Saturday, if, and if, if it works out, I can meet him at the uh, Edgemore Outdoors there Saturday and, and get uh, Chance's shirt. Uh, so uh, uh, I want you to know that, Linda, and, and uh, uh, I hope you're staying warm down in Florida. I wish we were down there. <laughs> Uh, 
So uh, anyway, uh, don't forget that film next week. And I've uh, got several more announcements here and, and that kind of thing. So we're going to show the crappie film and uh, come back, and, and uh, Mike's going to tell us how he caught it. On the hook. On the hook. <laughs> All right. Blue Springs, we're going out here today and see if we can find these crappie again. Okay. And uh, hmm. just bear with us, remember the sponsors, and let's go fishing. All right, folks, Mike's got a small, uh, little old bass out here. How deep is that fish, Mike? About 27, 28 feet. 27, 28 feet, okay. All right. How's the view, Mike? Well, I wanted to get you to hold him up there. Mike, I got something on here, folks. I don't know, maybe a cat. Maybe a crappie. It's kind of acting like a catfish, Mike. No, big old crappie. It's nice. Yes. All right. Hmm. Man, why? Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, all right. I hope I got that on the camera, folks. Mike, can you tell about the screen? Is he in there? Yeah, it looks like you got it. All right, that's a starter. That's good. Well, folks, Mike's got a striper on here. Yeah, Mike, I wish that had been a crappie. It's a nice one. Folks, we got a bunch of fish stacked up here on the death finder, but I tell you what, it's, uh, I see what it is. Mike, you're gonna have to get us out of these things. Yeah, we, ain't, we won't catch no crappie with that going on. Why that guy thinks they ain't got Huh? That's what we need that white jig. How'd they get you bleeding? Okay, folks. Got another crappie on here. I just missed one. Okay, Mike, take the front. All right, folks, I've got another one of those little old rock fish here. I can get him off. All right, Mike, you're gonna have to get us out of here. This one here's wanting to run out towards the middle. Yeah. We're in a gang of those them things, I tell you what. Gonna need the net, Mike.
Mike, yeah. I don't know. We need to get back into the crappie. Okay. All right, folks, maybe. I think Mike might have us out of them stripers, yeah. I believe you done good, Mike, making that move there. Another good crappie. You done good. Okay. All right, I think Mike's got what you got there, Mike. Yeah, good looking little crappie. All righty. Sounds good. All right, Mike. I've got another crappie on back here. That's good. All right, Mike, got another good crappie on there, ain't you? Yeah, he ain't talking about it. Okie dokie. Looks good. All right, Mike, I've got another crappie on back here. At least I think it's crappie. No, it's a dad gum cat. Oh, son of a gun. All right, we don't want that. That's the wrong with species. All right, Mike, what you got there, yeah? Yeah, another nice crappie. Yeah, the boy. Sitting about 34 feet of water. Crappie right here. Yeah. Okay. We'll take that. We've got some bigger, but he'll eat. But he sure got my good mineral. Mike, I've got another one on there. A little bigger this time. A little bigger. All right. like they're hanging I mean they're they're there on the death finder I don't know oh what, what the heck was that <laughs> they shoot far mighty
Ah, dead gummit. Missed that. Took my mint. Two far. That's another good. Hmm. That thing. Just a micro. Straight out from the boom marker with the back seat. Yeah. All right, Mike. Let's see what you got there, bud. Oh yeah. Yeah, nice one. There you go. We'll take that. All right, Mike. You got another one on there, ain't you? Good luck. Okay. Oh, that's a, that's the wrong species there, for sure. Huh. Well, he would come from where you just caught that last crappie. Got another keeper crappie on here, Mike. Got something on here. I don't know. Might be a cat. Maybe a crappie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice crappie. There we go. Mike, what do you think it is? Catfish. Yeah, it's a catfish. Okay. You call that all right. I don't know, Mike. I got something on there pretty decent size. I don't know what it is. Maybe a cat. If it's a crappie, it's a it's a dandy. I mean. Oh, right there's what he is. Huh. Brad Lockett showed up. <laughs> okay. I've got a drum on here, folks. Yeah. All right. We get him up here and get him off. Get back in the hunt for some crappie. All right, Mike. Think you got a crappie on? I don't know. He's circling now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of them whiskered crappies. All right, got a crappie that time, folks. Mike stole the buoy marker out. He thinks we're on to him, maybe. Mm. I will say I had to get three bites to get that one. Mike, I've got one on back here. I don't know what it is. Feels like a crappie. Yeah, sure is. Okay, we'll take it. For sure. All right, Mike, I've got another one on back here. I don't know if it's a crappie or a cat or what it is. Feels like it might be a cat. I believe it is. Yeah, that gummy. All right. We get rid of him, get something else. Yeah, I've got something on, Mike. I don't know if it's crappie or cat. That, that big old crappie. All right, we'll take him. That's good. Yeah, he hit good. So we did. Okay, well, folks, we're we're back. Uh, what do you think, Mike? Well, fairly good day. Weather wasn't the best, but we done pretty good, I guess. Considering we didn't get to fish maybe a half a day there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, there's two things I wanted to comment on, uh, or three things. You know, we hit several places there. Uh, yep. One thing I didn't do. 
Mike, and I, I, I want to do this on the next trip. I want to show a lot of the death finder. Yeah. yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. I want people to see uh, what we're looking at, uh, you know, to, uh, when, you know, when we see the fish and the bait fish and all that kind of stuff and, and uh, kind of what the death finder is showing us and uh, uh, they can find them. You know, we, we hit three or four different places on our way down the lake, but we wound up right down there in front of Uchi. Yeah. Uh, you know that area right in there has uh, uh, got a lot of uh, humps and and uh, channels and that kind of thing. And we were keying in there in that uh, 28, yeah. 30 foot of water, I guess. Uh, uh, you know, Mike. Uh, you know, you can tell us more about the trip there and, and uh, that kind of thing. And then. Another thing I wanted to bring out was when we stopped on the bluff line down there, uh, about halfway up to Uchi there on the right, and uh, uh, the current was moving pretty good right there. But you, you know, we caught a couple of crappie, and then uh, you pulled out a little deeper and found the rockfish. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and, and you know, I I should have shot that. Uh, Death finder uh, or the fish locator, uh, right then uh, because it was just covered up with all I, you know, why well, there's no telling how many of those uh rock fish were right there in that vicinity, uh, and they may have got bigger or smaller, but they sure was a bunch up, yeah. And the size of the arch, I think they got a lot bigger, yeah. I, I, I do too. I'm glad we moved out of them, so uh, that kind of thing, so uh. You know, folks, we, uh, Mike, tell, tell, tell the people what that guy told you at work today uh, or about the show. Uh, one of the safety uh, directors for Geocon down there, he's from up north, and uh, he told me that uh, he watched the show the other, last week, and uh, he was really amazed at what, information he found out from this show compared to what they had up north up there said nobody would tell anybody anything on how to catch them where to go or anything about it up there said he, he really liked the show he was amazed by it yeah, well that's good i'm glad i'm glad he liked it and glad he uh, thinks we uh, pass along good information and like i told you folks before us freshmen we never tell everything uh, but we'll get you close. Uh, uh, but there's a lot of little tricks there, Mike, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, perfecting the technique, uh, fishing slow, fishing fast, uh, just a lot of things. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you everything that we, we possibly can. And I don't want to infringe on none of these guys that I interview uh, on the camera. Uh, you know, you know, one of the guys up there the other day said, you done hurt me. You told them to call them on sprinter. I said, I didn't tell them you called them on sprinter bait. I just asked you what you called them on. Yeah. You know. I don't know what you and, mean. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, that's, uh, if you want to tell, that's fine. If you don't, that's that's okay too, you know. And, and it's good information passed along to the fishermen. And and uh, if you'll read the Sunday paper uh, on the fishing report, uh, it tells a lot of uh, things, you know, uh, catch them off the points and on the secondary points and back in the creeks and, and you know, spinner baits is good and this that. So, you know, we're, we're just getting it first-hand information instead of out of the paper or what have you folks. So uh, uh, bear with us on that. And, and, you know, some of these guys won't, won't say. Yeah, it's just like the guy said he called them up there in the Mike, on the crankbait. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. But, I mean, it, it's good to – Get that information out to these kids and let them enjoy it because the, that's our future right there. Right. Uh, so uh, that's a, a good thing right there. I Herschel just come in here and told me my mic might not be working. I just cut it. To... Now, Herschel. Now then. Okay, folks, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, so uh, we'll go from there, and, and uh, hopefully we didn't miss too much. Mike, they may have heard me on your mic. But, uh, uh, yeah, we, we just want to get the information out, you know, of what, what 
what we fish with, what we like to do, and and uh, that kind of thing. Hopefully, it helps somebody help you all catch more fish and and uh, that kind of thing. You know, the minor fishing is not no big big deal. Uh, uh, we've talked about that over here a year or so a year ago, and and uh, you know, uh, just a, a drop shot rig, and yeah. and uh, you know, the the key to it is just kind of idling around with the death finder and and uh, finding the bait fish, finding the fish, and, and uh, you know, that kind of thing, or the structure. So uh, uh, once you, you know, get on that, or, you, you know, crappie is, is uh, relatively, this time of year, if you can brave the cold weather, uh, you can catch them. Catch a sack full sometimes. You can catch a sack full, that's a fact. Uh, catch them trolling, planer boards, uh, straight lining like we do. Uh, uh, just uh, on and on, you know, uh, different methods and ways to catch them. So uh, uh, we'll just keep passing that good information along to you and uh, try to get you some more uh, uh, info on what's going on. Uh, Mike, what, what do you think uh, one of the keys was down there uh, Sunday? I mean, uh, tell us about the trip in your, in, in your way of thinking. Well, I think... We had to move on down to find the cleaner water. Definitely for a fact. And uh, staying next to the creek channels, we didn't do much good out on the uh, main channel bluff. We got a few, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, they seem to be holding more on the creek channels. Little drops and stuff come out there anywhere 28 down to 36 or something in that range right there. But uh, with the minnows, you've seen a lot of minnows in there. They seem to be holding out there about that depth too. So we'll see some on out there a lot deeper. I mean, there's times that the depth finder wouldn't even read because there was so many minerals. And, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, the cleaner water's got a lot to do with it. It's, uh, I think you, chances are a whole lot better <laughs> and, uh, when it's good and clear and what it is. Uh, dirty water. And, uh, right. I agree with that. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, uh, well, I hadn't seen many chartreuse minors, Mike. No, no, I neither. <laughs> you know, uh, they uh, look that way to the fish, but <laughs> yeah, they don't look that way to us. Now, no. if, we, if uh, uh, we can come up with one, why then then we might fish that muddy water. With might fish that muddy water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and and that's that's why. Uh, you know, we used bright heads, bright painted heads, and bright colored jigs uh, and flies and, and stuff to catch these crappie. Uh, I always like the chartreuse and white and, and, uh, or uh, a yellow and white uh, combination. Uh, you know, the old uh, heady calls we used to fish mm -hmm. with years ago, uh, uh, you know, they wasn't really all that fancy is just the color of them and, and them crappie like them. So, uh, you know, it's a, it, that, that kind of stuff, you just got to kind of experiment with them crappie, but, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, that's, that's what we're doing right now. And, uh, uh, I don't know uh, when we'll get back to Norse and, and, uh, I, you know, I've caught three bass and on three trips at Watts Bar. So, uh, yeah. Mike, uh, uh, hadn't done much good on the bass fishing. No, it seemed like they disappear at this time of year. I don't know what's going on, whether it's on a hunger strike or what. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, folks, we're going to take a little break. I'm going to get some water here, and uh, we're going to show this uh, East Tennessee Fishing Show uh, film again and uh, with Ms. Sheila Bunch, and and because uh, that fishing show starts next Thursday night. And uh, we're going to have the show next Thursday night, but uh, 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 we'll, we won't be there on opening night, but hopefully get over there before it's over, Mike. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Herschel, take us to that break, Finn, will you? I want you to look at the camera. <laughs> hey, folks. Uh, I'm here with uh, Sheila Bunch. And Sheila is the promoter of the East Tennessee Fishing Show that's going to take place here in January. And uh, I'm going to 
stepped back in the background and Miss Sheila's gonna tell us all about the fishing show, what she's got going on and all that good stuff. So Sheila, just have at it. All right, well, first of all, I guess I need to tell everybody when it is. January the 16th through the 19th at the Jacobs Building at Chihaly Park in Knoxville, Tennessee. And that, um, the times you will find out on the website, which is www.easttennesseefishingshow.com. This year, we were proud to announce that we've got a whole list of uh, pros that's coming. Jimmy Houston, Terry Scroggins, Scroggins yes, Jay Ellis, Audie Foe, Brandon Card, Shaw Grigsby, and Mike Delvisco. And we will be doing seminars by local pros, such as Brandon Coulter and Tim Deering. And well, they're more, yeah, Audi Foe, they're a, lot, a whole lot listed on the website, so you can find out more information. And we add to that just about daily to weekly. And let's see, we've got three new boat dealers, Bunch Marine, Arrowhead, and White Pine. And everybody's welcome to bring their trade-ins. All these dealers will be more than happy to walk outside to look at your boat if you're looking for a new one. And this year we have all, we have a whole lot of new vendors. We have some of the ones that were in there last year that's been coming for years, but we've got a We've got vendors that have never been in the show before that's going to be there. And this year we've actually had m add more space for the vendors. We've actually got so many vendors that um, in this show you can plan your whole fishing year. I mean, you can sign up for tournaments, you can find your fishing guides, you can buy all your fishing tackle, all your electronics, buy your new boat. Anything you could ask for is at this show and you can plan your whole year. Let's see. Oh, and one of the best things that about this show is we're going to be giving away a boat. We're going to, um, only thing you have to do is come, pay to get in, and the ticket you get at the door, you will take it and register. So if you come out four days, you can register four different times. If you want to buy six tickets, you can go register six times. It doesn't matter. But the East Tennessee Fishing Show is January the 16th through the 19th at the Jacobs Building at Jahali Park. And the children under age? Oh, yes. And the children, let's see, the admission is $8, and children get in free under 8 years old, and all the free parking you can want. All right. Folks, there, there you go. The, the show, uh, and, and uh, Vicki, I know you have, or Sheila, you have been taking care of that for several years now, and it's gotten bigger every year. Yeah, it's my fourth year, and I love doing it. I love uh, I love the communi communication between me and the um, vendors. They are absolutely wonderful. These people are people that actually work really hard. The products that they have, you cannot buy just anywhere. You cannot go to Bass Pro Shop. I shouldn't have said that, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll work that out. Uh, that we'll, we'll bleep that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot buy these products any, any place except the East Tennessee Fishing Show. Uh, I, I don't know that I've missed maybe one or two uh, since that thing's been going on, and, and uh, it's, uh, it's a delight for me to get over there. Uh, also, uh, you know, everybody's kind of got cabin fever, Sheila, and, and, and you've got a, a big, this is a premier show of, of, in this area. And, yes. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to it and can't wait. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you may look at that. <laughs> okay. Uh, folks, like I said, that thing starts next Thursday night, Mike, and uh, uh, it's going to be, you know, a big thing there. And uh, I told, I didn't say mention anything last week, but it, I just remembered uh, she was talking about the kayakers and stuff, uh, kayak fishermen. Uh, mm -hmm. They got some people coming over. Uh, are they going to have some of those kayaks uh, uh, that's fishable uh, at the show this year and uh, that kind of thing? So, man, you know, we'll just have to go over and see. That's probably at Hobie. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, who it is, Mike? I have enough time getting get, uh, fishing with you out of your boat uh, uh, 
<laughs> uh, let alone us being in a kayak, you know. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, the way you throw things around and everything. A uh, <clears throat> couple of little announcements right quick. Uh, now that we got that break film over with and, and the East Tennessee Fishing Show, uh, photo of the month. Haven't see, received anything for January as of yet, folks. And, uh, you know, it don't have to – any kind of fish, you know. So catfish, musky, uh, drum, I don't care. Just send me a photo so we can get you a shirt, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, don't forget – the fishing show is on YouTube. You can back up. Uh, I don't know. Herschel's not many episodes Every behind. Every episode we got. Every episode we got, he just told me. Man, I tell you what, he is on it. Uh, so uh, uh, that's why he's in charge. That's a, that's a good deal. So, we, you know, uh, for the last couple of months, you can back up and, and, and catch any of the shows. And, and I've watched a couple of them myself because I don't very, you know, I don't get to watch many of them. Uh, 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 you know, uh, I've saw more here in the last couple of months than I have all year, Mike. Yeah. Uh, uh, just to because of just always doing something on Saturday night and and uh, really don't get a chance to see what they look like. So uh, that kind of thing. Um, the gentleman that called in a couple of, a month or so ago about the trip below Loudon Dam. I mentioned that last week. I've lost your name and your phone number. If you're listening tonight, call me in here in a few minutes and let's get a get a date planned. It sounds like if it wasn't for all the rain, Saturday would be a perfect time. But uh, the water ought to be plenty cold enough now, Mike. Yeah, no doubt about that. And with this cold front coming in there the end of next week, so uh, uh, we'll uh, maybe he'll call back and and and. Uh, I'm sorry, apologize for that. Uh, I wrote it down and, and couldn't find what I wrote it on. And so if, you, if you're listening this week, call me back here after a while and, and let's set up a date. Uh, another quick thing right quick, uh, Glenn Reynolds. Uh, Going to have him on here uh, the 23rd, January the 23rd. That's Thursday week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Glenn's going to come back on the show and and bring some more uh, things, uh, tech tips, uh, uh, injectors on your engines, lower units, uh, uh, that kind of thing. So uh, we had a good show with Glenn here a couple of months ago, and and looking forward to getting him back over. He, we he and I talked uh, last week, and and uh, he's all enthused about coming back, and and I'm enthused about having him. So. Uh, uh, that's Glenn Reynolds, Glenn, uh, Reynolds Racing the Marine. And Glenn, like I said, Glenn's got a lot of knowledge. So uh, we get him back over here on uh, January the 23rd. And uh, let's see, uh, Mike, what else was it? Uh, we done give the fishing tips, the best you could do at it. So I'm going to give the tournament schedule right quick. We got uh, January the 11th, which is Saturday going to be uh, Heartland at Caney Creek. Mike Ellis is in charge of that. Uh, George Carroll has gone, mentioned that last week, to Florida. Uh, he's going to be back. Theirs was January the 18th at point nineteen, And then another one, January the 11th, so down at Tom Fuller Park. So, uh, uh, Mike, we'll have to look at that real close. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I thought I'd bring that to your attention. You see where the ice is thawed out at. <laughs> see where the ice is thawed out. All right. Wow. Okay. Uh, listen, uh, Mike is going to do uh, – I put him in charge of the tackle box tip this week, and, uh, man, he got the table loaded down over here. Uh, Mike, tell us what you got. Well, most people know everybody gets hung up. Nah, now wait a minute. Hold it. I mean, everybody. Nah, don't be including me in that. You uh, hang up a $15 plug or even a, a two cent minter, and you don't want to have to spend any time retying all the time. So it's a good investment to buy a plug knocker. Lure retriever. Yeah, lure retriever. retriever. What do you want to call it? Yeah. Uh, uh, there's many different shapes and sizes of them. And uh, 
A lot of them is homemade. Uh, one I use uh, made myself, and uh, this is a store bought job of yours. Yeah, you know, I come from Edgemore Outdoors. Edgemore Outdoors. Yeah. I think you put the chains on it. No, he was on it. Was he on it? Yeah, he's already on it. Already on it. Yeah. Okay. Try I mean, time. I wouldn't, I don't, you know, I just carried around for the people I fish with. Well, that may be true, too, but it <laughs> saves a lot of money, though, don't it? Yeah. Helps you get unhooked and stuff, but uh, you might want to snap that on your line. Your line just bring it through underneath and it snaps on, drop it down and knock it loose and bring it back up and slip your line back off and uh, save you a lot of money. I mean, you know, you, you pay a couple of dollars for a jig and then put a, another dollar or so in a piece of pork rind or something on it, or like say a $15 plug or even a uh, a rig, you know, you get mm -hmm. to figuring these uh, Alabama rigs out. Uh, well, I, that's the reason I picked that one out, Mike, uh, up there because it had the chains. I, it's, I like, I always, uh, the, it's crankbait. Yeah, crankbait you know, mostly. You, you shake yeah. that down on your crankbait and and you run the bill. Uh, hopefully, the thing's looking up at you or what looking down. You if you don't get on the bill, you can get that chain hung in the hook and, and retreat. Yeah. I pulled a tree. Up yeah, with it over there one day, I thought, man, a lie, and uh, yeah. uh, I didn't want to lose my crankbait, and, and uh, it just kept easing up. And finally, I got it up there mm -hmm. and shoot as a cedar top. It had about a eight inch stump or a log on it, you know, the bud mm -hmm. the tree, and there my plug was, and I got it. So I was tickled to death of that. So, yeah, but that's the uh, very few times I had to use. I know I've heard you cry a lot when you've lost some good plugs and stuff. Uh, uh, I have. I ain't no <laughs> doubt about that. All right, go ahead, and, Mike. And fish didn't take them either. Yeah. Uh, this is one that, uh, that you bought over at the show last year that the boy come up with to knock him uh, A-rigs loose. Yeah. Uh, he's put a big uh, hook on the bottom of it to try to hook into them. And, uh, You're going to have to hold that up there better than that. People can't see it. Yeah. Uh, I don't fish that A rig that much, so I don't hang it up. <laughs> yeah, right. leave that up to you. Okay, uh, but uh, you can tell them how good you think it works. I think it does a pretty good job. Myself. I think it worked worked excellent. Uh, you know, uh, these A rigs are twenty dollars a piece. Uh, some of them fifteen, uh, but most of them are running twenty bucks mi minimum. And you put another ten dollars worth of baits on it, and or more, uh, or yeah. more. Yeah. And uh, uh, and and by the way, I I know I saw this. Uh, the Heartland is going to allow a nine war rig, or seven war rig, a five war or three war uh, this year. It's uh, the only thing is you can't use but uh, three hooks. Three hooks again. So, you know. Uh, and your trailers are run, they run anywhere from seven to ten to twelve dollars a pack. So you get three or four of them in the pack, Mike. Now you got a nine war, so you're gonna have to have uh, three packs just yeah. to rig your yeah. uh, bait up. So uh, you got fifty dollars. You're going to tie. Out there yeah, time. you're going to tie up fifty dollars uh, in a bait. So you don't want to. So you know one of these things is is a, is a must. Uh, uh, if you hang that thing up, you don't want to lose it. I guarantee you, you it makes you sick. So uh, uh, that one there works good. All right, what's mm -hmm. your next? Well, here's some more deals that uh, I think this is a store-bought job here. It's, you snap it on your line with a little snap, drop it down. You can tie something on the end of it and bring it back up if you want to. It's kind of knock something loose like little fly or small crankbait or something. Just another chunk of lead on a piece of beaded material there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Got a, got a swivel here. And I, I'm, I know you unsnap the swivel, put it on your line, snap it back, and turn it loose. And like I said, if you want to tie an extra line on it to retrieve it back in case you don't get your bait loose, uh, I, I can go with that. Mm-hmm. There's something similar to it that they've uh, used an egg sinker and uh, pulled a big snap through it to yep. snap it on there and drop it down. Right. 
Okay. I've even heard of them using spark plugs. Yeah. <laughs> I have too, Mike. To knock stuff loose. And uh, this is one that uh, we got from uh, Paul Harris up there that uh, him and Bill Nichols come up with there. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's a dandy. Yeah. Pull your line through it and snap it around there and drop it down there and knock it loose and flip it back loose. Yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a dandy. It works real good. It yeah. works real good. You're fishing a quarter, three sixteenths ounce fly, you know, small yeah. spinner bait, and just about any little old small bait you want to drop it on it, probably knock it loose. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it'll get a crankbait loose, too. Yep. That's sure a will. job on that. Uh-huh. And this and here is the paperclip job. There's a lot of different ones pouring that up. It's just a little piece of lead there with a paper clip in it and snap your line in it and let it drop down there and bounce it a few times and a lot of times it well, I'd say nine out of ten times it usually knocks it loose. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Well I, you've got a pretty good variety, Mike. You must hang up a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, I do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You well, stick them hooks in them brush piles and you won't get them hung. So there you go. Herschel, turn the phones on, we. Maybe somebody will call in and want to buy some lead from Mike. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, folks, that that is a, a variety. Uh, wait a minute, Mike. You forgot something over there. Oh, no. The pole. Oh, the pole, yeah. Yeah. Better get that out here, too. Yeah. There's your extension pole that twists it around your line and extend your pole out and run it down there. 10, 15 foot or something, I think it's about the maximum on it, eh? Yeah, uh, I actually, I think that's a 12 footer. 12 footer? Yeah. And, and uh, gouge your bait loose if you ain't too deep, but fish like uh, you do sometimes, you it ain't quite long enough. Yeah, right. Uh, all right. I guess that's about right, Mike, but that that's a that's a, a good little thing to carry right there, folks. Yeah. And uh, uh, I Keep that in my rod locker box. Uh, it's good, uh, uh, you know, uh, up to eight or ten foot deep. Uh, most medium running crank baits, spinner baits in there, shallow, what have you. Uh, this thing will get them loose, and like I said, you just twist that right around your line, follow your line down, knock it loose. So uh, it's good to push yourself off of stuff. Yeah, you it's uh, well. Uh, I try to keep it put up as much as possible, Mike. Yeah. That way, I don't. I'm not hung up. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean. Uh, but uh, it, it it works great. Uh, like I say, it in there to that uh, ten foot range, and mm-hmm. and uh, when you got something hung up on a stump or behind a rock or in a brush pile, uh, it, it's a good deal. And uh, so that's uh, that's good. All right, Mike. Uh, that sounds like a a, a good deal. Uh, Right quick, uh, while we're waiting on the phones to ring, uh, don't forget a bunch for rain. They'll be uh, setting up the, uh, they're getting ready for the uh, uh, fishing show. Uh, Glenn, like I said, going to be over here the, the 23rd uh, of January and doing mm-hmm. some things. Uh, Heartland Anglers uh, tournaments going on uh, right now, you know, so, and they're, their big spring bash is, is uh, scheduled, I think, uh, sometime in February. Uh, I'll get the date on that next week uh, down at Chickamauga to kick off the, the, the spring fishing season, spring and summer of uh, uh, 2014. Uh, sign shop. Uh, Mike, I wish you had your coat off. You could show them. Uh, oh, T-shirt. Of, yeah, your Amy. T-shirt there. Yeah. Amy fixed up for you. Yeah. Uh, in uh, Citizens First Bank, don't forget those people. Uh, Tim's Tire, you know, hey, the weather we've had, if you've got by here so far uh, and you need some tires, uh, realize you need tires, go buy Tim's down there and get you some tires. Yeah, you won't beat his price. Uh, I just about guarantee it. Uh, if you do, you let me know about it uh, because I... <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen anything like it myself uh, in the, on, on the tire price and, and, and the service down there. You, you go in and while well, you're sitting over there in the outside in the lobby there and they put your tires on and call you when they're ready. So uh, uh, 
uh, Tim Steyer. Knox Area Rescue Ministries, uh, anything you can do to help those folks, I guarantee you'd be greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Mountain Pizza. Uh, let me get this call and we'll do Mountain Pizza. Hello, caller. Hey, Steve. Hey. hey. Hello, Willie. How's it going? Hey, buddy, going good. Going good. We need a good fishing report. Well, I, I, my uh, trolling motor's been messed up. Oh, man, that's that's bad. <laughs> well, my big motor was messed up, and it cost me a... I went and bought it for six months, and it cost me $8.32 to fix it. Boy, I tell you what, you got out lucky there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, it was the gas filter had water in it where I'd use that darn ethanol. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had, had to do it. It sure will, Willie. Uh, talking about them plug knockers, I was down there in Candy Creek and I was trolling that DT6. Mm -hmm. And I hung up and I run one of my plug knockers down there. I've got the ones that's got the twist on the ends. Yes, sir. And I run one down there, and I, it didn't come away. So I run another one down there. It still didn't come away. So I got my 18-foot tossed open pole out. My depth finder said I was 70 foot. And I run that pole down in there about, oh, I guess about eight, nine foot. And I couldn't reach it, so I started to pull the pole back out. And there it slipped out of my hand and went down the line. <laughs> So I took another plug knocker and took me a big old jigging spoon with a good old big treble hook on it. Mm -hmm. Run the, I had a big split ring on it, and I run it around the top of one of them plug knockers and then tied a quarter-inch rope on there, run it down there, finally pulled it loose, and they was uh, a big wad of braid, a big wad of monofilament, and a tree limb, and um, I got a nice plug and a nice <laughs> sinker and a worm hook. <laughs> oh, oh man! I got my plug back and my pole and three plug knockers. <laughs> what? Well, that sounds like you've done pretty good. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but I didn't want to lose that DT6 because that's my favorite lure. I, I guarantee you, that's that. That's what it's all about, man. I, you know, not losing that favorite bait. That's the whole key to it. I hear you. <laughs> sure is. Willie, good to hear from you. Well, maybe I'll get the trolling motor fixed, and, and uh, maybe the next time I call in, I'll give you a good fishing report. All right. That's what we're looking for, and I appreciate you calling. All right. I'll have a good one. Okay, Willie. Thank good you, buddy. All right. Thank you, buddy. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Okay. Good to hear that from Willie. Maybe he'll get the trolling motor going, Mike, and get on some fish. I thought you was going to offer him your paddle there. Huh? What? Willie, I thought you was going to offer oh. him your paddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Willie, I should have I, I told you I had a good paddle, but I tell you what, it's hard to paddle fast enough, Mike, to troll. <laughs> you know, uh, for sure. Uh, got all the sponsors except Mountain Pizza, uh, and they got uh, uh, karaoke on Saturday night and uh, Tuesday night special on pizzas four ninety nine uh, for one topping, and then eight ninety nine for regular through the week, uh, twelve ninety nine mm -hmm. for a loaded up pizza. So uh, go buy Mountain Pizza down there, folks, and and. Uh, uh, Watch, while you're sitting there watching the Let's Go Fishing show, you can be enjoying a nice meal. And they've got some great stir fry, I'm telling you. I've done, had that a couple of times myself. And man, it's good. Uh, C and D printing up there. Don't forget old Charlie Lane. Uh, hadn't talked to Charlie in a while, but I, I, I plugged with him. And, and uh, he's helped me out a few times. So uh, don't forget all the sponsors. Got to have them. Keep the show going. Um, Mike... Uh, Let's see, there's something else. We gave the tournament schedule. Uh, uh, shucks, I, I know you're forgetting something, so you better come up with it. Well, if we get a chance to go 
uh, this weekend. Uh, I'm going to try to shoot a little film on uh, loading your boat up. Uh, I remember uh, a lot of the, down in Florida and several places around, uh, they got signs about this power loading because you start sucking all that material out around them ramps and tearing the ramps up and stuff. And I see a lot of people down there uh, loading their boat, and they just full throttle as hard as they go trying to push that boat up on that uh, trailer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, if they had uh, seen the way that we load our boats without doing that, it's much easier. Uh, it, it might help them out about uh, not tearing the ramps up and everything because, uh, you know, it costs a lot of money to fix these ramps back. And, and you could back off in there where they watered out a big hole and drop your trailer off in there and then tear your trailer up trying to get it back out of there. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we, we'll try to come up with something on that. Uh, we'll, deal there. okay, we'll, we'll look at that. Um, you know, Mike, we've had our little episodes with these boat ramps, too. I oh, yeah. <clears throat> never will forget, I went down there at Blue Springs, and in the winter time, the water was down. Throwed my boat in and come back loaded up and messed up a $400 prop. Yeah. You know, yeah. didn't hit the bottom, but it sucked all them sucked all that brambles stuff. and stuff up, me trying to power load it, as you mm, call it. Yeah. So uh, anyway, folks, we'll we'll see how that works out. and. And uh, remember all the announcements. Uh, Rick done the, the duck uh, film, calling film next week, and uh, Glenn Reynolds uh, the 23rd. And don't forget the Let's Go uh, East Tennessee Fishing Thing uh, Expo starting uh, at uh, uh, Jacobs Building there at Chilhowee Park uh, next Thursday night. And uh, me and Mike will be right here, I guess. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll have some good film for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, just to recap of what we talked about tonight, uh, and uh, Chuck's, I was hoping that gentleman would call in about that fishing trip below Fort Loudon Dam. I've got to find out who that was. I, I've looked everywhere I can think of for his name. I wrote it on something, but I just hadn't been able to find it. I'm going to keep looking, so i got to get a trip set up with him. How much time we got, Herschel? About 30 seconds. About 30 seconds. Okay, folks, uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, get on no scrappy, uh, you know, or before this next cold front comes in. And, and one thing I will say right quick, Mike, watch bars almost full. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, get, I mean, uh, it's it's up there and they're holding mm -hmm, so because yeah. uh, it's iced over. So uh, uh, hope to see y'all next week. God bless you and and uh, hope you get on some fish.